Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. The European Commission wants to strengthen and better protect the rights of victims of crime so they can receive support, access information, seek justice and receive immediate compensation. Want to know more? Stay with us. It's estimated that every year 15% of Europeans, that is about 75 million citizens, fall victim to a crime, be it sexual violence, homicides, robberies, thefts or fraud, among others. And the real number is probably much higher, as many don't report to the police, especially when the crime involves sexual violence. And victims deserve the best possible support and protection. So what is the EU doing to ensure that? The European Union has rules in place to ensure this since 2001, and even improved them in 2012. But despite the progress, victims of crime still cannot fully rely on their rights because they often lack access to information, support, protection and justice. There is still also a lack of specialised support for the most vulnerable victims and problems in obtaining compensation. Now, to address these shortcomings and after extensive consultation with stakeholders, in July 2023, the European Commission proposed to revamp the existing rules and expand victims' rights. So what will change? First of all, an improvement in victims' access to information by establishing a universal victims' helpline in all EU member states with an EU-wide telephone number, 116006, where victims can get information about their rights and emotional support, and also be redirected to specialised support services if needed. The Commission is also pushing for protection measures that correspond better to the specific needs of the victims, especially the most vulnerable ones, such as children, elderly or disabled persons, or victims of hate crimes, as well as better access to specialist support, such as free psychological support for as long as necessary for each victim. Another objective is to facilitate victims' access to justice and improve their participation in criminal proceedings. And equally important, ensuring easier and effective access to compensation from the offender. According to the Commission's proposal, victims have the right to obtain a decision on compensation from the offender as part of the criminal proceedings and the state should pay that directly to the victim, recovering the sum from the offender afterwards. Victim support networks all across Europe welcome the changes proposed by the Commission, but some would like to go one step further. Here's Levant Altan, Executive Director of Victims Support Europe. But most solutions are relevant to all victims and can address core priorities such as poverty reduction, equality, cohesion and rule of law. But to do so, they have to be joined up, they have to be comprehensive and they have to enable cooperation across all of those areas. Government, civil society and the private sector working together. Ultimately, we have to ensure that no victim is left behind. The European Parliament has been vocal in its support for victims' rights and for their expansion to respond better to victims' needs. We spoke to the co-rapporteurs Maria Soraya Rodriguez and Javier Zarzalejos. We are proposing important improvements such as avoiding secondary victimization by facilitating access to compensation and handing victims access to legal aid and advice improving the training of officials who may come into contact with victims, and finally, very important, reinforcing the references to online forms of violence, such as gender-based violence or child sexual abuse. We need to improve and to ensure the access to justice, and um, we have to make sure that the dignity of victims is uh, respected from the very beginning of uh, their um, path towards a real justice. So, what are the next steps? We've asked Martina Perpich from the European Parliamentary Research Service. Well, the Commission's proposal has to be adopted now by the European Parliament and the Council. And once adopted, EU countries would have in general two years to implement a directive into their national law. Want to know more? Check out Martina Papic's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.